Hi, welcome back. Today's episode is about white noise in time series with R. We are going to deal with time series data and we want to ask using R if our data is white noise. How do we determine when a series of data is representing or is coming from white noise? We're going to use different test plots to describe and analyze time series. Let's go now. We want to describe white noise. However, we need a mathematical function or a mathematical representation to talk about white noise and to understand and to try to recognize some time series as white noise. For that, we have this little formula here. As you can see, white t is our time series data. And if our white t is coming from a white noise or is representing a white noise, it's going to have something like this, a constant. Let's talk about number 1, 2, 3, 2.5, and some random value. That means that our data will have an average value. And every time we move forward, one day, one hour later, then there is some random data increasing the value or decreasing the value of time. So you can see here, I have here some value A as a constant that doesn't have to be exactly zero. In when we're generating generate white noise, usually we use A equals zero. So we only have some random data, let's call it E, in function of time. So you can see what noise is defined as normal data with some mean, called we call it V, and some variance that is constant too. Not necessarily our white noise has to be generated using a normal function. However, normal functions usually work better than other ones. Then we're going to generate and we're going to identify white noise, we will recognize white noise as a normal function with a mean p and a constant variance. We're going to generate our white noise as we generate errors in, in a linear model. You can see here, we will try to understand if there is a mean value for the y and also if, as it is, generate with some random values. That's what we're going to try to see. We're going to plot our data and try to see some average. And also, if the values around that average are just random around. Then we have here that our expected value is going to be zero. Of course, as I'm saying, if we use A as a constant, usually we will have then a variance, a constant variance, as you can see, which sometimes we'll talk about a standard deviation too. Of course, it's going to be the square root of this. Just call it sigma. And a very important definition and property of white noise is that two values in the signal with different time, that means the day one and the day two or day three, have no correlation at all. That means their covariance is going to be equal to zero. We will try to check if our time series data follows these three properties. Let's see. We're going to model some white noise. As you can see here, I'm going to use some random values. I'm going to generate some random values. You can see we're going to generate 100 values with a mean 0 and a standard deviation 1. We're going to use the standard normal distribution. We will have the mean. Of course, it's going to be around 0. You can see. I'm going to try to generate some dates. So you can see here we have 100 days from January 1st. And we are adding 100 numbers more to generate, as you can see here, we have 100 dates, starting from January 1st. And we're going to create some white noise data frame, as you can see here. And here we have, we have different dates, some random values around in, in Y. And now you can do it in two ways. You can create the object time series in this way too, remember, here we have Y. That is our data, the date, starting, and frequency because we are dealing with days. So this other way, if you want to create it this way or this way, both can work just fine. So you can see here, it's going to be something, something similar. White noise, TS. But this object, remember, is one. This object is going to be a time series object. Meanwhile, this the white, W wise noise is a data frame. Okay, you can create in different ways, remember. 
is here, for example, as date. And then a sequence, you can call it month, day, then day, or just, just create some bunch of data using this function as date. OK, visualization. Let's use ggplot2 to see our data. And then we have something here. I'm going to use, in this case, my data frame, wynose1. And as you can see, x is equal to x, y is equal to y, y, is equal to y. And I'm going to add some geo point and some line. And we have here our point and our line to discover how is the fluctuation around our data. And run it. And here we have. For our, for example, as you can, I was telling you, one of the properties of our white noise data, it has to be around some average. So we can see here, this data is just scattered all around zero, as you can see here, and moving up and down. There are some uphills and downhills around zero. If you can throw a line around zero, you can have it around here, and you will see that there are some variations around zero. We also can see that standard deviations are between negative 2 and 2. You can see our variance is constant. How to discover if there's correlation between this point and the other point? Or around our data, we will discover that. OK, let's see. If you want to throw our time series object, you, you can use the function plot ts. You can see here. And we have x as time. And we can throw a horizontal line, as was telling you before. And you can see here it is. You can discover, you can see, you can observe that all our data is higher around that y equals 0 line. OK. Now, what if about what I add some constant different than 0 to my normal distribution? Some that data I was generating. Let's see here, for example, mean equal 3 and start the derivation equal 1. That means that I'm not working now anymore with my standard normal distribution. And as you can see, and save it. The mean is going to be around 3. Okay, In the same than before, I just create a data frame. And I'm going to create my geo, geo plot object. And you will see and with this. OK, perfect. Now, as you can see here, our data is around 3. You can see here that's y equals 3. And our data is just scattered around y equals 3. There are some uphills and downhills, but I can see that most of my data is around 2 and 4. So I can say that, OK, I have a expected value 3, constant variance. Let's see a third example of white noise. You can see now the difference between this one and the other ones is that my mean for my random data is 0, but I'm adding a constant 3. So let's see what is the difference between example 2 and example 3. We have y equal 3 plus some random normal data, mean equal 3. We, as before, we create our data frame and we plot it. So I'm not changing too much, so you can see just how I generate my data. And let's see if it does have the same pattern. Now, here we can observe how our data continue being scattered around 3. We have y equal 3, and then some values are going up and down because we are generating random values around 3. So example 2 and example 3 are similar. They have a similar behavior then we can consider them as white noise. However, to exactly test, exactly test if our data is white noise, we're going to use, first of all, the library TSWGE, because we're going to use the Linux test. We're going to use this library. However, if we don't have it installed, where it's necessary to install it first, once we install it, we can call the function WGE to use the Linux test for testing if our time series is representing white noise or not. OK, let's see the hypothesis. The hypothesis for this test is as follows. We're going to say that our hypothesis null is we are dealing with white noise. That means that our p-value should be greater than 0 0.05. And if not, of course, we're going to say that, OK, we reject null hypothesis. 
we are dealing with not why not call the library and now I'm gonna call our data exactly is represented with Y remember and when we create our first white noise and we run this you can see here I can see our e value 0 0.18 I don't reject our null hypothesis that means we are dealing with white noise and here you can see that Joomla test was saying before okay great well, the same we can do with the second and third example 0 0.21 for the p-value, the third sample, 0, 0.0. Okay, what's going on here? What we can say? That means that our sample three was not white noise. Okay, remember that we are generating some random data. That sometimes it could vary. And I can show you, it's important you see to see. This is that we're gonna generate again, and this is gonna change. Here we are. So you can see the same model, that's the random part of my white definition change and now I'm dealing with some white noise of course we're regenerating random data normal data in this case if there are some values that could be a little bit different than other distribution but in the, with the same standard deviation with the same mean that could generate a tiny difference that the Joomla test doesn't capture as random or white noise in this case another option in this case is that box test so we can see here when we call box.test is coming from the library stats and then we see we call it box pierce or June box the same and you can see we run the same way than before box test then we have the box pierce test also called June box test telling us that our first example is representing white noise. Then, example of white noise. Can you see here example of not white noise? Example, we are gonna create some random data. We're using the uniform distribution, 100 values with mean zero, and going from zero to three, I mean, you can see, and we create it, and we can find the mean. Remember that the mean in this case is gonna be the middle point, and we see the plot. You can see it looks like we are generating ra some random data around 1.5. And we can see some variation in our data. But you can see that's what I'm saying is varying as we had in example one, example two. But when we use the Joomla test, let's check. Okay, it's telling us yes, you have some white noise. Let's try again using. Again, for random uniform, as you can see, the uniform distribution also can be used for generating some white noise. I have test two times some random data, and the p-value is telling us don't reject the null hypothesis. You are working with some white noise. And what if I add some values to my random data? This, for example, in this case, for each day, for each hour, each step in time i'm increasing one unit you can see here here we have what is what's the problem here that i don't have some constant you have a trend it's not constant around some for example for the 40 around 40 and scatter all around no this is an increasing on time you can see here we can say okay around five because it was generating random data with mean five and once we use the uh, Joomla test, that we have to reject the null hypothesis. What about other data, not only trend, but let's see, for example, when we use some data from pneumonia influenza death in US. So you can see here we have different peaks. This looks like we have some seasonality and some trend. Does it count as white noise? Let's see, using that Joomla test and it's not the definition of white noise why is not a definition of white noise because we can see there is first of all some trend variations but with some cycle or seasonality okay and we were talking about correlation how to measure correlation in a time series data as you can see 
we have we're gonna use a like we use a library card to install it once we have installed the library card we could call it and we're gonna use function a test turbine watson test why because this test will tell us if our data is presenting correlation if we call it positive correlation or negative autocorrelation let's discover for our two of our examples of white noise you can see here i call turbine watson test and what is this saying? What is the result are saying? Well, the Durbin Watson test tells us if our data has a result near two, we don't have autocorrelation in our data. So you can see here, for our first data, we have we have a value around two. But what about the other one here? The white the white noise three is too close to zero, so we are saying that we have some correlation. However, we're gonna discard that our white noise three is not white noise because we already used the Jumbo test to test if it was representing white noise or not. No, but this is one way to check if we have a true correlation in our data. So see you in the next episode talking about more about time series working with R.